What is up, spooky people? Welcome to another episode of Oddity Acres. Today we find ourselves in... Cameron. Cameron. Cameron, Cameron. West Virginia. <laughs> That's where we are at, Cameron, West Virginia. Um, it's about three and a half hours south of Cleveland. We are here for a very special museum, and it's called the Archive of the Afterlife. It is a paranormal museum. They have everything from funeral home relics to... Dolls. <laughs> dolls. <laughs> possessed items you know they they have stuff used for exorcism they have everything in here it's supposed to be real spooky uh, speaking of spooky we're in a cemetery so i mean i figured this would be the best place to do an intro so as of recording this today it is 100 Days to Halloween. Days to Halloween. There's 100 days to Halloween. Uh, it is uh, Saturday, the 23rd of July right now. So as of filming this, 100 days to Halloween. So we are kicking off an awesome vlog series. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. What's coming up? We have... Don't tell them what's coming up. There is there is so many special <laughs> things coming up. So And it's a surprise. So thank you guys so much for checking us out. Come with us as we explore the Haunted Museum. And we will see you when we get there. So we have made it inside the archive of the afterlife. We are in the front lobby. You gotta check this out. This is absolutely insane. There's an embalming table right here. Right there. It's crazy. My name is Steve Hummel. Uh, I own the archive of the afterlife here in Cameron, West Virginia. Um, the archive basically is a, an amassing of haunted relics, historical relics, uh, funerary items, mortuary items, and uh, some military stuff as well. So when did you start the museum? Um, the museum started uh, technically around October of 2011. Um, I had already had a gym and fitness center. I had just opened uh, a diner, and the diner had a small little extra room in it. And long story short, after some inspiration from a, after a visit to Gettysburg, um, decided I want to start like a little museum of people's ghostly experiences, point of views, opinions, whatnot on, on the paranormal. So that's kind of how it got started. So a lot of these items I know that you said get donated here. How often do you have people like bring in items and say, get this out of my house? Um, sometimes uh, that'll come from a phone call. It'll come from uh, DM, you know, anything like that. Sometimes email. Uh, they'll say, I have this item. Uh, it's been in my family for years or it freaks me out or feel uncomfortable around it. Um, sometimes will go retrieve the item. Sometimes they'll mail or bring the item to us. So one of the big questions is what, if you had to pinpoint the most haunted item that you have in this entire place, what would you say it is? That's within the building as it is today. Mm -hmm. I would say it would be our Hope doll. Okay. Uh, she's in what we call the dark room. The, uh, that area is for any item that was used uh, in or around an exorcism demonic cases, malevolent energy, anything involving that type of nature, uh, we keep in the dark room. Uh, she's been known to touch, push people, scratch people, actually move herself. Um, one of the main names actually documented that was picked up class A EVP was Leviathan. One thing you'll find with this museum, I keep it very transparent. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna see fishing string, you're not gonna see tape, nothing like that. No yeah. speakers and stuff like that. So we all, because we also offer partial and full overnight investigations of the museum as well. Perfect, so. perfect. Is there anything that you want to plug as far as those go, or? Uh, yeah, um, if you're interested in doing a half night or full night investigation uh, here at the archive, contact me on Facebook, Archive of the Afterlife, the National Museum of the Paranormal. Also, if you want to check out um, my uh, my buddy that I's uh, YouTube channel, it's called Paranormal Quest, and there are some. Uh, actual episodes on that channel 
that pertain to some of the items here inside the archive. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, brother. I appreciate hey, it. I appreciate it. Uh, blessing, man. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. I have, it took me two years to get this, but these items, there are five sod samples from the grave sites and areas of the Jack the Ripper victims. Oh my so gosh. I have those in my collection now, too. That's incredible. It took me a while to find someone to do it. Yeah. And then actually go do it. Right. <laughs> this used to be the kitchen. Now we have a couple of embalming tables, a gurney over here. Uh, some certificates from uh, funeral directors locally. Too cool. Doorway to the corner over. Her wow. Items and literature involving the former West Virginia State Penitentiary. There's a picture of the cap down there. Oh, wow. Okay. We actually set it on the actual electric, uh, electric chair itself. Those two I got at a yard sale, the fork and the knife, but there's actually the eagle inscription on it. Okay. From Germany, World War II era. Wow. Luftwaffe belt buckle, and that's a, a dog tag, a German dog tag. Oh, wow. But everything else came from the battlefields over in uh, Latvia. Okay, so how do you how do you get these items from the battlefields? Well, when you, I've caught the military for a while, mm -hmm. and there's a site on Facebook where people that do metal detecting, mm -hmm. But they're in the process of finding German and Russian soldiers buried. Okay. So anything found in the process leading up to the, the discovery of where the little burial area is, they put it on 48-hour auction on Facebook because they're all volunteers. Okay. So this helps them pay for food, pay for fuel. Anything found with the soldier, whether Russian or German, with this group called Legenda, okay. uh, stays with that person. And if there's any paperwork they can identify or any dog tags they can identify, they'll spend the next X amount of months trying to find the next of kin. Wow. And when it's all said and done and they've exhausted their ability to identify and find the next of kin, they give them a proper military burial. room. thousand eyes looking at me and to be in a museum where everything is haunted is the craziest feeling it's so surreal what are you thinking back there I don't like this room you don't like the room I mean if you're not into dolls it's not the room for you things actually most of these things have been donated to this museum and they have the stories behind it but it says that this porcelain doll was donated to the archive from an anonymous source the said person left this doll very abruptly while the museum volunteers were overseeing the museum unfortunately neither of the volunteers were able to obtain any history of ashen due to how briefly the guests remained within the museum will one of the museum volunteers at the time did say that the guests seemed very urgent in ridding themselves from this doll that is crazy They also do investigations here, which is really cool. They come in and do like nighttime paranormal investigations. I mean, once, I guess you put all these artifacts into one house, does the house become on it?
So this is like a, a state hospital, sanitarium, artifact kind of room, um, you know, filled with wheelchairs and garments that were worn, um, you know, different pieces from the hospitals. Um, absolutely crazy. So these are actually restraint garments worn by patients at the Massillon State Hospital. It looks like a nurse's. A nurse's out, oh, wow. And on the wheelchair. I didn't notice that there's blood stains and that's what the tag says. That is so eerie. How are you feeling in here? I don't like the upstairs. Like upstairs the upstairs better. There's a lot of energy. I'm gonna get a good turn here. hand mirror. This mirror was collected by Jason Love from a case in the United Kingdom. It's been reported that a female spirit attached to this piece is a result of her sudden suicide somewhere between 1920 and 1930. It says the family removed it due to disembodied voices, smells of perfumes, and feelings of depression. Wow. A lot of these have stories and note cards but there's so many pieces that just you don't know where they're from you can only guess and have a story in your head and let your imagination run wild so the plaque is saying that this mirror was picked up from a um, actually a local residence and it's said to um, show en entities are said to show themselves in this mirror that's Allison so but and that's me so it's not but <laughs> Look at all this stuff. Toy chair. No in-depth history has been reported about this little chair. However, it's been reported that it emits depressing energy to those who look at it. This clock, according to what this is saying, is that it was owned by an old lady that died in a hospital. Um, but the clock was at her house and when her family came back to retrieve her cat after her passing, the clock stopped at the exact moment in time that her grandmother passed away and it just stopped working. Wow. So. So we're standing in this house that's got so much energy from so many different people and there's so many different lives and 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 who knows what else and it's just it's the it's the strangest feeling to look at all of these items and try to figure out the story behind them and, and how they all make you feel a certain way it's it's mind-blowing something else really strange too is when we were in that back room um, that little closet space, I, I, when I walked up to the door room, I felt real uncomfortable, real uneasy. And when Allison went in, she said that you got, you feel nauseous. I didn't even tell you until I walked out. I had to leave the room. Yeah. It's, you were filming. believe what you will, there are absolutely energies that, that are around everywhere you go. Not just in here, not just in a haunted museum. I mean, there's energies in the walls of every old home, you know, and doesn't mean there's ghosts or spirits.
you know, here there might be, you know, next door there might be, but it, 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 energy is energy and it can affect how you feel. You know, it, it, it affects the world around you, which is, you know, the, the crazy part. Got some weather coming in, which is weird because perfect. I did not think it was supposed to rain. Did you? No. Oh, and the power just went out. Yeah. This is no joke. And this is completely unplanned. This is not, this was not planned. We are now in a storm in the archives of the Afterlife Paranormal Museum. The lights are out. Power's out. Um, we're just strolling through rooms. I mean, this is... Caskets on each side. <sighs> You can't you can't write YouTube. It just it just happens like this. I mean this is this is absolutely crazy. I really don't want to go back upstairs. We have to go in that room. This door is locked. Don't know if that means we're allowed in or we're not allowed in. the dark room if you had to pinpoint the most haunted item that you have in this entire place what would you say it is I would say it would be our hope doll okay. uh, she's in what we call the dark room this this room takes on a whole new feel and I don't know if it's just because the lights are out this is absolutely crazy It's hard to breathe in here. There is a mirror in the closet. This cross was used in an exorcism. Wow. You can hear the thunder outside. So they were up in the attic when all this happened and when Steve was praying over them and they had the loudest like hissing noise that they heard up in the attic. And uh, they were, they had three different cameras running at our old location. They, uh, Steve was getting ready to open the box and the other guy Ryan was talking and they heard the loudest, the loud hissing noise again. Mm -hmm. They have no idea where it came from. And like all three cameras picked it up and they're like, what the frick was that? So this is a, uh, a last rites box, right? Yes. Wow, these are so cool. These are things that they would hang, obviously, like if someone was dying, like in their room, and it would have, correct me if I'm wrong, but different items to like for the, police, the, the priest to the bless you as you pass and things like that, and they'd have them yes. inside this box. Yes. So it would be hanging in the room of someone passing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Those ones, I think, were used say more like in churches I'm not really sure we have okay. a couple last rites boxes upstairs in the haunted relic room and there's a flat one that just kind of sits and those ones were more for travel I think that one was more like standard that would hang in the chapel or something. okay as soon as we started exploring this place this storm came rolling in power went out I mean look at it this is insane 